We're going to look at linear definite equation with multiple variables, in this case, three variables x, y, z. We're going to use this particular example to explain different methods that we can use to solve these sort of problems. And here, of course, x, y, z are integers. Let's review that for two variables, the coefficient a and b are constant, if the greatest common divisor is d, then the solution here depends on if d is a factor of c or not. That is, if d is not a factor, then the equation has no solutions. On the other hand, if d divides c, then it has infinite many solutions. But how do we find the solutions? Usually, we start from Euclidean algorithm to find a particular position. So general solution. We're going to start with a particular x0, y0, and then once we have that, in general, we're going to have this infinite many solutions where k is any integers, right? So we're not going to use an example here, but we can just illustrate why. For example, if this GCD is 3, but then this is not a multiple of 3, then of course it has no solutions. It's very easy to understand because any x and y will give a multiple of 3 and 11 is not multiple of 3. On the other hand, if this is 3 and 5 is a co-prime, then we have infinite many solutions. How to find a particular solution? We use what is called extended Euclidean algorithm uh, to find the GCD. In this case, is trivial, you know. And negative 2 and 1, that would be a particular solution here, right? And in this case, because we have 11, so we multiply by this by 11, that would be a particular solution. And uh, let's go back to our problem with three variables. Introduce three different methods. In the first method, we're going to split this into two equations. How do we do that? So look at this equation here. We can rearrange it. This is a common factor 11 here. Notice that the three numbers are co-prime, so this has infinite many solutions. And uh, we're going to say this is going to be an integer here, so let's put this into two equations where this is the integer w for this term here, and the original equation becomes 35x plus 11w equal to 1, and 5y plus 7z equal to w. Now, notice that uh, these two equations both have solutions. Why? Because the GCD of the coefficient is all 1 here. Okay, so how do we find the solutions? Now, we can just solve the equation by using the method we described earlier because this each has two variables right so let's do that let's start with the second equation here 5y plus 7z let's start with when equal to 1 how to solve this equation now we're going to find a particular solution Euclidean algorithm here we're going to skip the steps but 3 and negative 2 is a particular solution so general solution from early result is going to be this one. Of course, this is the equation for equal to 1. But we're looking for w, so we need to multiply w um, in order to satisfy the new equation here. So y and z in terms of s, s is an integer, and w, right? So what is w? w is a solution for the first equation. So let's go back to solve the first equation here. That is 35 we need to find this the GCD here right, is 1 so use Euclidean algorithm we find that it's like 5 and 16 all right so with that a particular solution is found and general solution is going to be like that so we solve X and we solve W right, in terms of T right, T is any integer here combine the two results what do we get we're gonna get you know for these two equation here we know that for the first one, we have this solution, 
and here everything can be expressed in terms of s and t so we have two parameters and then we have an intermediate value w and then x y can be expressed in s and t or w which of course in return can be expressed in in terms of t okay so the solution here is x y z yeah and where st are parameters that's the solution that's the first method that is to split into two linear definite equation with two unknowns and then combine the result at the end all right so I give example even st equals zero then this is going to be a, a solution here you can verify that okay all right so this is one class of methods you know in solving multiple variables let's look at the second method in this method we try to use parameter with what is called a, a canonical form so what do we mean by that so notice that for this equation if there is one coefficient here that is one then the solution is straightforward right even though we have three variables in this case since this is an integer one here of course if the gcd is always one always has infinitely many solutions and how how do we find the solution it's straightforward just express x in terms of y and z where here y and z can take any integer values and then this will satisfy the equation and the solution is straightforward so that's that's good but of course in our case is not even close uh, this is 35 there's no one here in the coefficient so how, how shall we do that it turns out that we can move toward that so we're going to choose the coefficient here with smallest absolute value in this case going to be 35 and we can express x in terms of other values here and notice that uh, you can do some algebra here um, because this is 55 you can split in that into 35 and 20 this is going to be 70 and 7 so let's um, work out the steps all right so here we start with the original equation we choose 35 the smallest and we express x in terms of the you know the fraction here 1 minus 55 y minus 77 z over 35 and then for 55 and 77 we're going to keep the integer part and that is we have uh, uh, one negative y and negative 2z and minus y minus 2z and then the fraction still remains that is 1 minus 20y minus 7z over 35 of course we're dealing with integer solutions which means this whole fraction must be an integer let this integer be s integer s right so what that means is s is an integer and of course in this case x yeah you can uh, express in or in terms of y z and a variable s and what is s s is this fraction here right so which means 35 s would equal to 1 minus 20y minus 7z now here we turn to original equation into a new variable s we get rid of x right now here we work with smallest absolute value which is 7 so 7z equal 1 minus 20y and minus 35s and then z to the fraction here okay is the whole expression here divided by 7 and of course we're going to take the integer part of y and s here right this would be negative 21 maybe and then plus y this would be multiple of 7 that's good so negative 3y minus 5s plus 1 plus y over 7 this must be an integer let's call it t right integer t t is an integer here so in that case y plus 1 would equal 70 and then y would equal 70 minus 1 okay notice that now we expressed y in terms of t but z here just plug in here is going to be negative 3y minus 5s and plus t 
Now, you notice that we can pretty much express everything in terms of either S and T here, right? So here, what we have is we, we're going to plug in Y here, right? 17 minus 1 here in, in, in this expression here. So minus 5S plus T, and then we're going to combine the term here, negative 21 plus T, that's negative 20, and then this minus 3 becomes plus 3 here, minus 5s. So further um, combine the term, negative 20t minus negative 5s plus 3. All right, that's good. That's z. We express z in terms of s and t. All right. We express y in terms of t, yeah, and z in terms of s and t. Okay, and we express the originally we have uh, x right. So x is also um, now here we we have y and z. So we need to replace y and z with s and t. Let's do the algebra here, right? Let's copy it over here, right? So that's x in terms of y, z, and we want to get rid of y and z, right? So just plug in the y value here which is uh, 17 minus 1, right? So plug in here, flip the sign 1 minus 70, minus 2z minus 2, times z, the whole expression here with the plug in, yeah, like 20t minus 5s, and plus 3, and then we add s. Now we're going to combine the terms here, right? So that becomes 1 minus 7t, this is going to be plus 40t, yeah, because negative like is going to be plus, and plus 10s and minus 6 plus s. And further combine the term, what we get is negative 5, constant term, and then we have 10 and uh, 1, 11s, yeah? and for the t is 40 minus 7, yeah? so that will be 33, right? 33t. Okay, so now we are, we're done, right? So we express everything in two parameters, S and T. Okay. So that's, that's good. So we solve the equation using this method where we try to use parameters and then we try to change, you know, the original equation by looking at the coefficient with smallest absolute value and then you know through uh, three major steps we're able to solve x y z in terms of two parameters s and t where s and t can take any integers so in summary that's the solution here look at that this solution looks different from the original one but both would cover all possible solutions yeah so let's move on with method number three. In the third method, we're going to start from a particular solution, and then we're going to use a generic solution by changing this constant to zero. Okay? So that is, what do we do here? We find a particular solution that satisfies this x0, y0, z lot here, such as this original equation here. Once we find, once we have that, and then we're going to find a general solution by changing this to zero. So imagine that uh, if you do the summation, x0 plus x would be a general solution to the original equation here, right? So that's the step. So general solution is going to be x plus this particular solution, x0, y0, and z0 here, right? So let's try, let's try out. How do we find a particular solution here? Okay. We're going to rewrite it. So you can just say this has to be multiple of 11. You're going to try an arrow, and x lot is going to be 6, for example. And the whole thing is going to be 11 times negative 19. So which means 5y plus 7z would equal negative 19, right? And we try to find a particular solution, right? So there's no burden to find a generic solution. Now that's easy, right? We can just let y be 6 and 
db negative 7 that is we have found a particular solution to this original equation now we're going to find as a next step a general solution by changing this constant to zero right which makes it much easier to solve okay so change to zero here i can combine the terms notice that uh, x has because this is 35 and 11 is core prime which means x must be multiple of 11 let's x equal 11 s right then plug in there and which means 5y plus 7z equal like 35 s right just plug in this equation x equal 11 s now with that change it so the 5y equal negative 7 times some integer here now which means y has been multiplied by 7 right because 5 and 7 co prime so which means we can say y equals 7t or another parameter right so we have parameter s and t again in this case you plug in and then z is also expressing s plus t that is we find a general solution which is much easier because we don't have a con we don't have a constant here we have zero here so the solution here to this equation is going to be with two parameters s and t that's going to be x y and z right now earlier we said that what is the solution to the original definite equation we can just do the summation of this general solution with parameter s and t and the particular solution right this is a particular solution and this is a general solution the so overall solution is going to be just you know summation of these two right and parameter is s and t okay so in summary we have used three different methods in solving the equation and notice that uh, the method you know looks all different right but the, again as i said this is a different way of representing the numbers and uh, you can try it out offline and they should cover you know you can prove that these two are equivalent that is and there, everything is representable in a different format, right? So with with two parameters. Now for there's nothing special about this, and you can try out some other linear definite equation with three variables. You can try different method and discussed in this video. All right. So hope you enjoy the process, and please like, share, and subscribe to the channel.